let's now take a look at an example. So for this example, we're given the value of some vector field f, which is equal to x squared in the x direction, minus xz in the y direction, minus y squared in the z direction. And so I've also written that sort of simplified just with our angled brackets there as well. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the circulation of f around the closed path which is shown in the figure below. So it's along this path a, b, c, d, a. So we're going to be doing a line integral. And so our figure is just a cube and so I've drawn it with our x-axis a little bit or our position on our x-axis a little too far but it should be a cube of equal sides of one. And so we're going from a to b. So let's see if we can't draw our path here from b to c from C up here to D, and then finally from D back down to A. So we get something that looks like this, and again, let me put some arrows so we know our directions. So we get something that looks like that. Okay, so let's use our definition of the line integral and see what we need to find. So we have circulation, so we can put a, a closed path, so we have a little circle on our integral sign around our path L. We know in general this is going to be equal to f dot dl. Well, looking at this, we can see it's a little bit confusing because we don't necessarily have just one dl. So for this particular problem, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to split these into different segments, which each have their own unique dl. So using the green color, we can call this segment going from A to B segment 1, this segment going from B to C segment 2, from C to D, segment three, and from D back to A, segment four. So with that, what we can do is we can expand this integral a little bit and say this is going to be the integral along segment one plus the integral along segment two plus the integral along segment three plus the integral along segment four. And so for all of these integrals, it's going to be the integral of F dot DL. So what we need to do is consider each of these segments individually and find what DL value corresponds to each of them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sort of step through this and look at one segment at a time. So let's start with segment one. Okay, so for segment one, we're starting at point one zero zero and going to the origin at zero zero zero. So we're starting at one zero zero and we're going to point zero, zero, zero. Okay, so what we can see from that is that y is equal to z is equal to zero along this segment. And we also have that our dl is equal to dx in our x direction. So we're only changing in x along that line segment one. Now note, even though we're going in the negative x direction, I have not included a negative sign here. And the reason is, remember, that's going to be taken care of with our limits of integration, as we'll see in a little bit. So keeping in mind these values of y and z equals zero, we can come back to our expression for f up here and plug in zeros for y and z. And so what we find is that our f is now going to be, so along this segment, our f is equal to x squared, zero, zero. So what we can do now is we can evaluate that integral. So the integral along our segment one of f dot dl. So now we know everything we need. So <clears throat> here's where our limits of integration are very important. Uh, we know we're gonna have a dx. So actually, let me go ahead and do this. So essentially we have this f, and we're gonna be dotting with dl, which is dx in our x direction. So based on our dot product, we're gonna end up with an x squared dx here. But now our limits of integration are such that we're going from one zero zero to zero zero zero. So that means we're starting at x equals one and we're going to x equals zero. So when we evaluate this, we get x cubed over three evaluated from one to zero and we get the negative sign coming out there. So negative one third. So that's how we account for that negative x direction, okay? So we're gonna use that same basic idea and we're gonna do our other three segments. So segment two, so for segment two, we're going from our origin to point zero, one, zero. So we're going from zero, zero, zero at the origin to zero, one, zero at point C. 
And so let me move this a little bit down so we're not getting mixed up with segment one there. So for segment two, what we can see is that X and Z are now both zero. And our DL, we only have changes in Y, so this is just going to be equal to DY in our Y direction. Again, we can go back up to our F expression and plug in X equals zero and Z equals zero everywhere, and we see that our F is zero, zero, negative Y squared along this line of segment two, and actually along our whole Y axis. Okay, so now we're ready to plug into that integral expression. So we have integral along line segment two is f dot dl. And so that ends up being the integral of zero. And so our limits of integration would be y, so we would have been going from zero to one. But when we do this dot product of f dot dl, so we have, so sort of ignoring that for a second, we have zero, zero, negative y squared dot dy in our y direction and we see that that gives us zero times dy. Okay, so we have a zero for this second segment. So now let's move on to our segment three. So we see we're moving from zero, one, zero to one, one, one. So up at point D, we're at one, one, one. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and come down to this new page here. So segment three, we said we're going from point zero, one, zero to point one, one, one. And so what that means is we can see that our Y is consistently one along this point. So our F becomes X squared minus XZ minus one. And we can also get our DL, so our DL, now we're changing in X and Z, so we wanna account for both of those. So we have DX in our X direction, plus DZ in our Z direction. And again, I, we're, we're going in positive X and positive Z, but even if we weren't, as we'll see in a little bit, uh, we don't need any negative signs in this DL. Okay, so let's evaluate our, our F, uh, so not our F, our integral along segment three. And so that's going to be our F dot DL where F and DL are defined above. And so we get that's integral along segment three of X squared, should have had a comma there, negative XZ, negative one dot. Now we have DX in our X direction, zero in our Y and DZ in our Z direction. So what we get from that is the integral along segment three of x squared dx minus dz. Okay, so now we have x's and z's. Um, so how do we deal with that? Uh, in this case, it's relatively simple. We'll look at how to deal with more complex cases a little later on in the semester. But along this segment three, because this is linear, uh, and because we're going between the two points that we are, we can see that x and z are going to be equal to each other anywhere on that line. And so that's going to make this really simple. So we can say on this line, x equals z, which also means that dz equals dx. So we can rewrite this then as the integral of x squared minus one times dx. So I've just changed my dz to a dx, essentially. And now if we're talking about x, we set our limits of integration based on that. So we're going from zero x to one X. And of course we would get the same result if we changed our X to Z and our DX to DZ. So when we evaluate this, we get X cubed over three minus X evaluated between zero and one, and that ends up being negative two thirds. So that's for our segment three. So now finally, we are at our segment four. And so for our segment four, coming back to our figure briefly, we see we're going from point 111 up here at D to our initial point, which was 100. So segment four, we're going from 111 to 100. And so what we note on that, similar to with our segment three case, is on segment four, our X is always equal to one. So what that means is that our F, if we plug in a value of X for that expression for F becomes one, negative z, negative y squared. And we can also find our DL. We're not changing in x, but we're changing in y and z. 
So we have dy in our y direction plus a positive dz in our z direction. And again, our limits of integration are going to take care of that, uh, of any negative directions that we have to account for. Okay, so we're going to again do the integral over 4, which is f dot dl. So in this case, that's the integral over segment 4 of 1 negative z negative y squared dot with 0 dy dz. And so from that, clean that up a little bit. From that, we get that this is the integral over segment 4 of negative z dy minus y squared dz. So once again, we kind of have this mix of variables. We have z's and y's and dz's and dy's. And once again, in this case, it's easy to deal with because we can just say y equals z along this line and dy equals dz. We're, again, we're going to see some more complicated cases and how we deal with that later on in the semester. Um, but for this case, it, it works out pretty easily. So we could convert our z's to y's or our y's to z's. It doesn't really matter. Um, in this case, I'm going to do z's to y's such that we have a negative y minus y squared times dy. And now our y is starting at 1 and going to 0. So we need to be careful about our limits of integration. So we then have negative y squared divided by 2 minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from 1 to 0, and that gives us a value of 5, 6. Okay, so now what we do is we just come back to our equation right here, and we're just going to add all of these segments together. So we can say now that the overall, the circulation is L, circulation around L is F dot DL is equal to just the sum of those four things we found. So for segment one, we had negative one third, segment two, we had zero, segment three, we had negative two thirds, and finally, for segment four, we found five, six. So summing all of those together, we get negative one, six. And so that would be the answer to our question.